Welcome back. We're gonna dive now into under collateralized lending, lending that enables you to leverage beyond 2x. Similar to over collateralized lending, here again we have a borrower, right? So the borrower, for instance, can collateralize Ether and borrow DAI. And again, we have here a vault where the borrower deposits his assets. However, the difference now is that the value of DAI, which is the debt, can exceed the value of the Ether, which is the collateral in this particular case. And what's quite critical in under collateralized borrowing is that the, um, that the borrowed DAI and the collateralized ETH, they are restricted to be used with pre-designed smart contracts. So you can't like code up your own contract and, and uh, uh, send your, your um, debt towards this contract. You must use predefined uh, pre-designed contracts from the lending and borrowing platform uh, itself. So these are typically farming contracts. So if you want to generate yields based on your debt, then that's obviously something that you may want to consider. Um, but otherwise, it's probably not going to help you if you want to do any arbitrary action with your debt. So, which is really important here, the vault remains in control of all assets at any point in time during the life cycle of the debt position. One example screenshot is the following here. This is Alpha Humora or the dashboard of Alpha Humora. We have here um, a collateral value of a, of a particular peer of $1,900. Then we have a small amount of debt, which are $350 and we are receiving some tokens as a reward. So that's, the, that's a particular APY based on the tokens. And you can also see uh, here basically the, the, the position that's being opened. So that's a position uh, in the Uniswap ETH DAI pool. Okay, you, can, you may add uh, additional elements or you may close the position if you'd like to. In Alpha Mora, you can also see all open positions. So you can inspect basically on their webpage uh, how these positions look like, um, what's the debt ratio. I think this is something that you might be interested to, to further look into. You can explore the collateral credit, borrow credit, and the overall collateral value. Note that there are some pools uh, that are stable coin stable coins like this one here, and other pools that are more speculative coins uh, that are less, that are not stable or not supposed to be stable. So we crawled Alpha Homora and um, uh, actually from its inception, so Alpha Homora started in October 2020, uh, we crawled the smart contract data until August 2021 and we found that there are about 3,800 3, borrowers. Um, of which we found 10,430 leveraged positions that were closed at the end of our measurements. So we basically were searching for all the open borrowing positions in an effort to be able to calculate their final APY, so their final return and, and whether it was worth it or not. So we got some interesting data. So for example, we found that the average leverage multipliers are about 2.x and 3.x on the respective uh, Alpha Omora versions. So there's a version one and a version two. The main difference is that the version two allows for more, more assets beyond uh, Ether to, to be used. We also find um, rather intriguingly that, that stablecoin leverage multipliers on average are quite higher. So the average stablecoin multiplier is 5.4 almost, which makes sense because stablecoins are by by nature less volatile, uh, so it's less risky to uh, take on a higher leverage and the risk of being liquidated is naturally not that big then. So how are borrowers choosing leverage multipliers? So we have here plotted the, 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 our results based on uh, whether these are uh, stable coins, partial stable coins or non-stable coins. So stable coins is any any pair of assets that are stable, partial stable coins is where you have like one stable, uh, but but another non-stable coin, and non-stable coins are just tokens that are non-stable. And you can again see uh, the distribution here of the leverage multiplier for stable coins being significantly higher than the 
um, then the uh, leverage multipliers for partial or non-stable coins, which are more or less the same, right? So they have more or less the same users, basically more or less choose the same leverage multipliers as soon as you have a non-stable coin in your basket. So if we look at the various platforms so here, so in this uh, second plot, we we differentiate between the, the different platforms. We show curve, balances, sushi swap, and Uniswap. And we can find here that for the for curve, so that's the red one, right? Most of the leverage multipliers are rather high, which makes sense. Curve supports the most stable coin pools, um, but also Uniswap does support a few stable coin pools. So it's quite interesting to see here a few high leverage positions on Uniswap. And otherwise, SushiSwap uh, is taking quite a bunch of the of the positions that are that are there. So this data is based on um, leverage multipliers in Alpha Moro version two. So about two thousand five hundred positions that we investigated. Now you might ask, so what's what's the API under leverage? I mean, why wouldn't I take like always the highest leverage possible, right? So on the x-axis, we plot the initial leverage that we that we found those alpha or positions to take up to. So this is the initial position that uh, when at, at the time that you open the, the leverage. And then we calculated after closer, closure of the position, we calculated the API, the borrower API. And you can see here, it's not always shiny, rose positive. We have quite a few cases where the APY is actually negative and can even be significantly negative. So the size of the of the dots here, they actually represents the size, the relative size of the of the position. So the bigger it is, the bigger the position relative to the others. Um, and we we differentiate it here according to the duration of the position. So the red dots uh, are all the positions that are actually shorter than a day. And you can see by adding a regression line here that the the shorter the duration um, and, the, and the, the, the higher the leverage, the worse the API becomes, right? So on, in expectation here, for example, for 7x leverage, the borrow position is really quite, quite negative uh, um, regarding the APY. Luckily, I mean, these positions are rather short term lift. So it might also be that the that the borrower actually just exited the position quickly in order to avoid uh, further negative exposure. Um, but it's interesting, like longer term positions remain rather positive. Uh, here, these are or close to positive. So there's a big variety at least. And you can see uh, once we look here at higher leverage positions, right? We have certainly more data points on the negative side than on the positive side, which appears empty. Whereas if we look at the leverage multiplier of like about two, uh, so in this spectrum here, two, two, maybe three, then we can see more or less an even distribution between positive and negative ones. Um, yeah, so I leave the data, uh, I leave the further inspection of the data or interpretation of the data up to you. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to let us know in the comments or in the chat if you have any, any further thoughts based on, on, these, on these visualizations. So you might ask, so why, do, why shouldn't we choose like a leverage um, to, uh, to, to maximize the, why shouldn't we always choose the maximum leverage? And why does leverage not always amplify the APY in practice? So in practice, the leverage multiplier actually has an impact on a variety of, of different risks or events that we, that we can find out. Naturally, if you just look at the revenue, a leverage multiplier should increase your revenue. However, um, because you're borrowing more funds, right? You want to leverage more, so you need to borrow more. The borrowing interests also increase and they might be quite excessive. So depending on the market state, they can be significant. Also, your liquidation risk increases as you increase the leverage multiplier. Um, which is uh, which is a danger you don't want to be exposed to because once you get liquidated, your collateral is sold at a at a discount, and obviously you incur a loss. So just like the uh, automated market makers, also in Alpha Moro or over collateralized uh, under collateralized lending platforms, you do experience an impermanent loss, and this impermanent loss can be sometimes positive, sometimes sometimes negative, 
especially because of the type of margin trading that's possible on these platforms in which we don't have much time to go into further now but i will i will um, really encourage you to to explore these particular risks here and to further understand them feel free to also ask questions at any point in time so thank you very much for your attention in this uh, exciting leverage or under collateralized lending platform i would strongly re recommend to try them out yourself uh, but be careful uh, you might incur a total loss of funds um, especially if you choose excessive uh, leverage multipliers so maybe a little bit a smaller leverage multiplier is the safer bet but it's up to you